Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hey, what's going on everybody? You got Tommy and Randy here. Uh, today we'd like to do a little bit of an update on a, a video that we did called the Death Decree Law in the United States. And Randy, he was actually doing a study and it kind of led him to a little more light on this topic. And we have a lot of people that watch that video and they're still not full on board understanding that the death decree is only on on the Trinity. So we're going to go through and explain that in, in a little more detail. Hopefully it'll, it'll make sense to you all. And if not, please leave comments in the description below. But please read the information that we put in the description below first before you comment. So I want to start off, though, with and, and people might, you know, link this more towards conspiracy theorists and all that stuff. But uh, we'll just see. OK, so now I want I want to share. By the way, Tommy, on that comment too, great comment. The Bible is a conspiracy theorist. Jesus is coming back. Yes, he's coming back. That's a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> but he's coming back. Yes. So uh, on this this. Uh, link it's usatoday.com and this is a fact check and it, it claims that there's fake claims about us uh, purchasing 30,000 guillotines and the article says that for years a claim has circulated online about guillotines making a comeback and the us purchasing 30,000 of them social media posts cite no source in stating that not only did the government buy 30,000 guillotines but congress lobbied for and approved them Posts also uh, don't say where a government acquires 30,000 guillotines. The most recent flurry of social media claim date back to 2013, the year after President Barack Obama was elected to a second term. These allegations resurfaced this summer. Guillotine claims offer a few details. The online commentators peddling these rumors don't cite any documentation detailing why the United States would take a page out of the French Revolution's playbook only saying they were being stockpiled for use by the government. Some posts about the rumors also question whether beheadings in the Middle East are orchestrated to desensitize Americans to practice so they won't push back when the U.S. government starts sanctioning them stateside. The claims originate among anti-government or partisan groups. They often go hand-in-hand hand with the extremist claims the United States is ready to fill concentration camps and with the critical of its leaders. Okay, so you can believe that or not believe that. I mean, we're not really worried about that. Uh, but I do want to re read. By the this. way, if you're working and you're listening to our, our discussion here, Tommy, and you do have evidence and pictures of guillotines being housed in military facilities, uh, we don't want your name, but please send us your pictures. Please send us pictures and identification. Uh, you can do it under an alias, but send us pictures of those guillotines being assembled uh being assembled if you but don't get beheaded if you can amen Tommy. Yeah. yeah and i will put the from what i'm reading i will put the links in the description below so you can you know see if you believe the references or not but i also want to share this and this is from the atlantic.com and this says bring the guillotine back to death row a quick painless gruesome way to carry out capital punishment and this says if i were a governor of a state that executed prisoners i'd declare uh, a moratorium for my entire tenure. I wish that the United States would stop imposing the death penalty. I nevertheless find myself nodding along the Sunny Bunch's case for reintroducing the guillotine, a response to the botched execution of a death row inmate in Oklahoma. And this goes on to say, he argues that America has made its executions bloodless to protect the sensibilities of those who support the death penalty with less humane killings as a result. The electric chair, the gas chamber, lethal injection, all have had horrific problems. And Bunch writes, the guillotine really seems to solve everyone's problem. It was designed to deliver an efficient, quick, and painless death. It performs the, that task admirably. I understand the irony of a reactionary such as myself embracing the terror's preferred method of execution, but one must give credit where it's due. 
If we're going to do something, and a large number of Americans and American states are pretty committed to performing executions, we ought to do it right. And right, in this case, means quick and painless death. I can't really imagine any reasonable objection to a widespread adoption of a guillotine. And you know, Tommy, with the guillotine, like if, you, if you're if you shot, probably, I don't know if you're hung, very abominable ways to go, but with the guillotine, they can harvest your organs right off when they flop you over. They can take your organs out, you know, and and sell them. Makes it good for the medical community, like Fauci and the rest of them, yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. To harvest your organs and give them to other individuals, you don't have to pay that much, huh? Yeah. So on, on this one, if that seems a too, too little, you know, conspiracy theorist for you, <laughs> well, let's just see if the Bible talks about guillotines or beheadings or anything like that to maybe help you to see that you're being lied to by the government by these news medias and everything like that so randy uh why don't you go ahead and go over what you found yeah let's wrap this in to see what the bible says now you know what the bible says on this subject is very interesting revelation chapter 20 verse 4 now i want you to read all of chapter 20 but we're going to take 20 chapter 4 and it said and i saw the thrones this is revelation 20 verse 4 and i saw the thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Now, why were they beheaded? Okay. For the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. So, Tommy, let me ask you something. What is the witness of Jesus? That he's literally the son of God and that God sent him. Amen. So, this has to deal, we're saying, with that he is literally the son of God, which the Trinity denies. Yes. So, these individuals are beheaded for standing against the Trinity. Yeah. So, does the, the truth about the Sabbath or Sunday deny that Jesus is the son of God? Yeah. So, so the, the day is not what denies the sonship. Yes, the day is, is Sunday is wrong. But the Trinity doctrine is the only thing, the only doctrine that truly denies the sonship of Christ. Now, let's go on because we got to see if this talking about now, Tommy, right? Yes. In other words, now we don't want to we don't want to look a thousand years ago. Yeah, I mean, and, that could have been the Dark Ages. Yeah, it could have been the Dark Ages, and it could have been in France. It could have been in the Middle East where Muslims are chopping people's heads off. Heads off. It says, and the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. So these people that were beheaded in this time period. We're witnessing for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. So what are me and you doing, Tommy? We're uh, witnessing for Jesus and, and, we're and the, word the word of God. God. Yes. And which had, now listen, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, in other words, their thought process, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Boy, you could preach just that one. You could preach a whole sermon yeah. on this scripture. Well, anyway, Tommy, it looks like, well, this happens when you know that you can identify the beast, right? Mm -hmm. you, you need to know who the beast power is. Yes. You need to know what the beast power promotes, the first beast power and the second and the image, right? Yes. We don't have time to go through that. But we know that the first beast power from the Bible, the King James, by the way, identifies the first beast power as who, Tommy? The papacy. And how many points in the Bible show that? Uh, several, but so far that we, we can share a list of 26 identifying points. And 26 of them from the Bible have to, all 26 have to hit. One can't hit here yeah. and another. And who does that perfectly fit? The papacy. Whoa. And... Who is the second beast power? America. Oh, my goodness, America. And who's bringing in guillotine, supposedly, into America? I mean, we've got congressmen wanting to use it as a substitute for the death penalty. Yeah. What? Okay, well, anyway, there's something interesting. And, and Tommy, we put this together. We did an, an article on it where we had a lot of hits. It's the Sunday Rest Bill and the Trinity. And by the way... Uh, Sunday's coming in under climate change under the papacy. That's why your Joe is uh, bringing uh, climate change in and everybody's wanting to go to electric vehicles that they still have to plug in to get power from coal companies and oil because there's not enough power in the sun or generators to power all the cars. Of course, they don't want one-third of the population to be alive anyway. 
Yeah, and and Randy, uh, qu- quickly on climate change, I got a verse on that. So Go if you, if you if you're a little worried about climate change, and if you're on the you know fence of is it true or is it not? Well, let's see what the Bible says about it. Let's go to Genesis chapter eight, verse twenty-two. All right, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So hot and cold will not cease. So don't worry about climate change. No. Will God flood the earth again, Tommy? No. Well, how do we know that, Tommy? The Bible said it. And the rainbow, right? Yes. So if you hear Satan read rainbow, God's never going to flood the earth. Now he's going to burn it up. Not by the climate. It's gonna Not be by, by the, the climate. The, yeah, by the, Amen. It's going to be by the volcano the fire. He's going to burn it up. But we don't have to worry about that. Yeah. That was the devil and his angels. So in other words, as long as earth consists, there'll still be seasons if you believe the Bible. Yes. But science is telling you that we need to get Bill Gates up there in an airplane <laughs> and block the sun because we're getting too much sun, eh? Yeah. That he becomes the god of climate. Yes. Boy, man's messed up a lot of things, haven't they, Tommy? Yes. Huh? Well, go ahead, though. With what okay. You got. Anyway, we're going to look at the Breckenridge Law again. I'm going to have to read some things uh, here. We're going to have this posted with Tommy and try to connect this a little bit. So it says... It will be noticed that the League, the International Sunday Observance League, has other plans besides the intention to persecute or prosecute those who do not bow to this man-made day. Perhaps they will prosecute or persecute those who do not believe in the Trinity. Now, why do we believe that, Tommy? Because there's laws on the books in the United States of America that have a death decree. Yep. For not accepting the Trinity. Yep. It's not about accepting Saturday or Sunday. That's for you Seventh-day Adventists out there. Yes. It's for not accepting the Trinity. In other words, they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the Word of God. They didn't accept the Trinity. Nope. Because the Trinity is not in the Word of God by the way. So let me read a little bit. Tommy's going to lay this out because we want to keep this short. I recommend you go over it. I think you'll find it enlightening. It'll lead you closer to Jesus and the Father. Don't worry about being headed. Worry about living for God. It says, this is a statement. So what laws on the statute books is in direct connection to the Sunday rest bill? The law that anyone who publicly denies the Trinity will be persecuted. And we know that according to Rome, Sunday is connected to the Trinity God, directly connected. Sun worship is to the Trinity. Yes. It's not about the day, right? No. So you could be on Saturday worshiping the Trinity and really worshiping Satan or sun worship, right? Yes. On Saturday, the seventh day. Yes. Right day, wrong God. Don't even know the God you're worshiping, but you're on the day. Yes. That's a start, by the way, you know, on there. So... Question 1092, what is Sunday or the Lord's Day in general? It is a day dedicated by the apostles, listen, to the honor of the Most Holy Trinity. What? This is the Dewey Catechism of 1649. So let's look at this a little closer. It says, it was also to be noticed that this league, the International Sunday Preservative League, has other plans besides the intention to prosecute those who do not bow down to their man-made Trinity Sabbath worship day. Perhaps they will prosecute those who do not believe in the Trinity. Their spiritual ancestors, the Puritans, considered the arrest and punishment of those who rejected this church dogma as something pleasing to the deity. In other words, they kill you and think they do it in the name of God. Yeah, and that's why they killed Jesus. So the doctrine of the Trinity and the sacredness of Sunday are both orthodox plums of marvelous sweetness to this ministerial duo. So that's Review and Herald. Anyway, so what are all the churches uniting on today, Tommy? You know, that's a question. What are they uniting on? The Trinity. The Trinity. Take a look at our Ecumenical God of Rome page, which we're going to have down here. It's more information on what we're just talking about. So Rome is uniting all the churches on its Trinity God ready for the mark to be enforced. Okay, now, 
Let's go back to what's attached to this bill. Now, this is going to address Seventh-day Adventists, too, because they don't think it's an important issue. There are a lot of Adventists out there that are not in an organization that don't believe in the Trinity, but they don't think that it is a salvational issue. Isn't that right, Tommy? Yes. Very dangerous. Now, attached to the Sunday Law Bill in Ohio, we find the following exemption. The proviso or provision of the Sunday Law exempts those who conscientiously observe the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath. What? Arguments on the Breckenridge Sunday Bill, you're going to see that source above. So what this means, the seventh day Sabbath keepers would be exempt, but those who deny the Trinity will be punished. That's a deception. Is this going to be a factor in the coming Sunday law? We will see but the fact shows that this is not just about a Sunday law, but about the Trinity God of Rome, so closely connected, Tommy. You're going to give this documentation on the site. Yes. So what I see, I'm going to read Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 again. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Now, why were they beheaded? For the witness of Jesus. And Tommy, what is the witness of Jesus? That he's literally the son of God. Does the Trinity deny that? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And they were also for the word of God. What do you base your belief on that the Trinity is pagan? The word of God. Wow. And which they did not, what is the beast? And they did not worship the beast. Now, what is worship and what is their main belief? That Sunday is honor of what? The Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity. That's worship, isn't it, Tommy? Yes. Neither his image, so you become the image of that, right? A yes. three-headed, co-eternal being that's one that you can't make any sense of, that the Bible doesn't teach. That's interchangeable. Right. Yeah. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. In other words, come to the same thought process as the papacy. Yes. Like the Catholic Seventh-day Adventist have become. Yes are in their hands, and in their hands you sign bills and documents, don't you, Tommy? Yes. In other words, in Congress, I know that when Joe got into office, the first thing he started to do was get that pen out and had a line of books, and what was he doing with his hand, Tommy? Signing. Mm, signing bills, wasn't he? Yep. First thing he did, he had that pen ready, didn't he, Tommy? Yeah, he did. I wonder what his mind, his thought was while he was signing those, Tommy. What was in his mind? Listen, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, I'm going to do with verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So, Tommy, what resurrection do you want to be in? The first one. Because there's two, right? Yes. What's the second one? The resurrection to eternal damnation. Two resurrections in the Bible. The life and death. Life and death. So what we're saying is, is that there could possibly, not everyone, but before Christ comes back, that you could possibly be beheaded by your own government for denying the Trinity, for denying the Trinity or ecumenical Rome, not keeping the Sabbath. Yes. Is that what we're saying, Tommy? Yes. Yeah, because the Sabbath, I don't see any laws on the books for the seventh day and if you can, please put the laws down underneath the comment sections. Yes. I don't see any laws on the books against keeping Saturday. Yeah, and keep in mind, and, and this is going to be geared towards more Adventists when it, this comment. If you believe, you know, that Ellen White was a prophet, and if you go by her writings, I'm going to give Ellen White a quote that's from another book called uh, The Trinity Doctrine Exposed, and it's an SDA version. So, and Ellen White even said uh, that there is more to be revealed yet on the mark of the beast. And here's this quote. It says, the light that we have upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood, nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. And this is Ellen White, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 17.1, 1900. And I'll also make sure to put the, a PDF of this book in the description below, too, so you guys can study this as well. She also made a, made a quote that Jesus could have come back at any moment from 1844 as long as the messages went out, okay? So that means that the law would have had to have been on the books during her time period, during her life. Right. And they were non-Trinitarian, And they were non-Trinitarian. Non and, and this law was on the books 
in her lifetime. And this is 1890 by A.T. Jones, and this is the arguments on the Breckenridge Bill. And there was exceptions for Sabbath keeper. And you can keep any day of the week. It even says you can keep any day of the week. You're not going to be killed over the day. You might be, you know, fined or something for breaking Sunday, but you're not going to be, it's not going to be held against you for keeping whatever day you want. They're not going to force you to break a day. Are they going to show up to your house and make sure you're breaking the true Sabbath? How could they? Or so, the seventh day, yeah. over the first day. So it's a trinity. The trinity identifies the God of that day. Yes. So the only way you're going to be killed is over denying the Trinity. And that was on the books in her time period. And A.T. Jones worked side by side with Ellen White. And don't you think if he missed anything in his argument that she would have corrected him? But there's no writings about it. So I also want to go back to the Justinian decree real quick. And we'll, we'll show that the death decree has always been on the Trinity. So uh, this goes to uh, the Justinian decree. Okay. And it says... Uh, moreover, he who is an adherent of the Nicene faith and a true believer in the Catholic religion should be understood to be one uh, who believes the Almighty God in Christ, the Son of God, uh, are one person, God of God, light of light, and let no one by rejection dishonor the Holy Spirit, whom we expect and receive from supreme parent of all things, in whom the sentiment of a pure and undefiled faith flourishes, as well as the belief in the undivided substance of, of a holy trinity." This is the Justinian Code, but what follows when the church gets complete control over the state? Persecution does. Okay, so then we read, Let those who do not accept those doctrines cease to apply the name of true religion to their fraudulent belief, and let them be branded with their open crimes, and having been made from the threshold of all churches, be utterly excluded from them. And as we forbid all heretics to hold unlawful assemblies within cities. If, however, any seditious outbreak should be attempted, we order them to be driven outside the walls of the city with relentless violence. Hmm. So the uh, persecution, the Othgoth, Mandelin, Herli, you yes. know, Tommy, and this is historical. These are facts. They were destroyed because they went against the Catholic doctrine of the Trinity for where they could promote that pagan doctrine fully. They had to get rid of those individuals. Yes and destroy every writing. And by the way, Jesus is not created. He's begotten. Yes. <laughs> and there is a Holy Spirit, but we know who that Spirit is. It's Christ Jesus, the Father, the, the Son, to us. It's not a third being. Co-eternal and co-equal is not in your Bible. Yeah, and it's, in that verse where it says they were beheaded, so that right there shows a death decree. Okay, and then also they were only beheaded for the witness of Jesus. They were only beheaded for believing he was truly the son of God. They were not beheaded over the day that they kept. No. Or else it would have said it in that verse. Or it would have said it anywhere in the Bible. And that's for Seventh-day Adventists. Yes. In other words, there, you know, we do believe that in the fourth commandment, but there's three others before that. But if you have the right day and don't know the God of that day, what's it matter, Tommy? Yeah, and but it doesn't make sense. How are they going to make a law to force you to break the Sabbath? Yeah, and if they do, if you do have a law, please put it in the comment sections for Saturday, Friday evening till Saturday, because we already know that there's going to be a law for Sunday. And I always wonder about the Seventh Day Adventists too, Tommy. While we're discussing this, I know we're going to go over time, but what are they going to witness about on Sunday? Because you know, you have somebody from Sunday that's going to say, "Well, we have the same God." Yeah. We worship the Trinity or Godhead just like you do. You just do it on Saturday. We do it on Sunday. How are you going to explain that, Tommy? And the Bible does not teach that. Old and New Testament does not teach that. Go ahead, Diane. We have plenty yes. of scriptural guidance from your Bible. Well, I'm going to end there, Tommy. God bless. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, your salvation is not in a day. It's in the God of the day. Amen. And, and also, your persecution is not about a day. It's about the God of the day. So if you have any more you know, information on this, if we're in error, please put it in the comments. And, please and, give us biblical scripture. Yes. Because uh, yes. we'll, we're open uh, to learn on this, uh, to learn on this. You have the right God, it'll lead you to the right day. But the Trinity is pagan, and it's been accepted by the Catholic Seventh-day Adventist organization from Catholicism and was put in. Go ahead, Tom. And it'll be, the Trinity will be the only thing that will put you to death, not the day. And if you want like more of, of about what this talks about, please check out our video, The Death Decree Law in the United States. And also, if you're Seventh-day Adventist, you may want to check out our Are the SDA Safe in the End Times. That, that'll uh, help you a lot more with 
identifying who that Holy Spirit is, making sure you have the right spirit in the end times. But thank you very much. Uh, Take care and God bless. God bless.